Hello YouTubes. I was this close to resuming work on the low cost 7R7 project, but then I found something very interesting on Facebook Marketplace, which I just have to buy. So I need to go and empty the truck out, head down to Brantford, and then I'll be back to show you what I got. Have you guessed what it is yet? It's a pony! Just kidding, obviously. This is a vintage 80 gallon air compressor with humongous motor, which I picked up for the bargain price of, I'll tell you at the end of the video. For now, I need to work out how on earth I'm gonna get this off of the truck probably need to employ my engine hoist because it took two of us to get this on. The motor's heavier than the tank. So let me get that done and I'll see you in the garage and I'll go through what I've got because I'm going to need some advice on this. I haven't had a compressor of this size before. That's crazy heavy. Right, let me give you a closer look. Starting with the tank. As you can see, it is a Lincoln Compressors. I have no idea of the age of this. If anyone wants to hazard a guess at what sort of era or age this is, leave a comment. A little bit surface rust, but I will be completely renoing this if possible, and get rid of the rust and repaint it. So we have a big plug there, for whatever reason, another one down there, and the drain is at the bottom, which I managed to snap off already. It was sitting that way, in the bottom of the tank, and I grabbed it when I was moving the thing about, and it just fell off. But that makes sense, because if you look at this, it went down along and then up, so any water was just going to be sitting in there, rusting that little end away. So I need to get the old one out and put in a new drain tap. Okay, onwards. Lovely big base, welded to the top, if that makes sense. But the motor wasn't sitting on this. As you can see, there's no holes in this. I'll tell you what air the motor was later. Down this side, we have a emergency relief valve. What do you call it? That's nice and tight. Further down, we've got the main pipe coming out with a nice big tap. This was obviously plumbed into a proper workshop and this would have gone into the main air line system around a garage, workshop, whatever. But as it is at the moment, pointing backwards, that's not really going to work for me. So I may have to change that. And as I say at the top, this is where the air goes in from from the compressor itself. On this side, nice little gauge. I'm guessing it's supposed to sit between these two red lines. If it goes above that, then it blows up. I don't know, you tell me. And I think that's all there is with this tank. It needs a bit of work, a bit of rest, a bit of paint. Onto the humongous motor. Now it might be a Lincoln compressor tank. Don't think it's a Lincoln motor and compressor. I'll let you see what this label says. Means nothing to me. But just for just for talking sake, there's the size of the motor. Pretty big. I think that's a little trip switch thing there. Power goes in from there. Goes up here, comes from this. Uh, what's that, a pressure switch? 
once it gets to a certain pressure it cuts off the power i believe power goes in there i'm not quite sure why the power goes in there and then goes diagonally across as opposed to the power going straight that way and then the power out coming straight that way leave a comment let me know why it does that the belt double belt configuration but it's going to need new belts that's not going to last long bit of surface rust as you can imagine but when i turn this it does chuff oh it burps as well it spins freely makes a bit of a howl might need a bit of oiling oh look a lucky dime hmm. 10 cents less than i paid for it nice another valvey thing there um what else i don't know what i'm looking at that says danger and that presumably is an oil dipstick Looks nice and clean. Lovely. Around the back, what have we got? These little pipes. Don't know what they're for. I don't know what this is for. If anyone wants to tell me what that's for, that'd be interesting. There's also some sort of adjusting thing there. Not sure if that's oil pressure or air pressure. Leave a comment. <laughs> I'm going to get a lot of comments because I don't know what I'm looking at. So this configuration was where... The compressed air was coming out it would obviously go up to the pressure measurer device up here and then carry on down this way down here and this would actually get attached to a rubber hose which he did supply and that goes to the top of the tank so if i'm going to set this on top of the tank then i need to cut a hole in here for that pipe to stick through but presumably I will need to do a 90 degree bend here, straight down. And I'm guessing I'll probably need a rubber hose to go from there to that pipe. Otherwise it might vibrate loose and break something. Leave a comment, let me know if that's what I need to do. If I'm mounting this up here. These guys did not have it, or previous owner did not have this mounted on top. They had this sitting miles away from the tank. So I think the tank was maybe in a you know, a closet or whatever to keep the... Actually, no, because the noise would come from that. What am I talking about? Regardless, this was sitting separate from that. But in the interest of saving space, I'm going to be mounting that up there. At least that's the plan. I just noticed there's another T coming off this side. So I could actually have two tanks running from this one motor if I wanted. Yeah, because I've got so much space, I would love two of these tanks in here, right? <laughs> Not happening. Okay, that's your walk around of this motor, compressor, the big tank. It's huge, look at the size of it. Look at my wee hand compared to that. In fact, here's a good comparison. How pathetic does that look now? Speaking of which, that'll be going to a swap meet soon. So I've wanted a big compressor for literally years and I've been making do with that little 20 gallon tank, but it's really only good for pumping up tires. Without a decent sized compressor and tank, I can't run my air tools and I can't paint on a large scale. And I'm really getting fed up using spray cans. They're expensive and just not very good, to be honest. I have all the gear. I've got all the, the air tools and I've got all the spray guns and the pipes, the, the, the hoses. I just needed the gigantic compressor and tank, which I now have. Hopefully it works. To buy this sort of thing new, we are talking two grand for that size of tank. New. I said new already. I have to stress, new is expensive. So what did this cost? tank now i have been assured it all works you know i'll need to get some fittings obviously but if i get all this up and running it cost me 200 dollars for everything okay even if i have to spend 100 dollars more on fitting and 20 30 dollars in paint and prep that's a huge saving if it works remember the old the old vintage stuff was built to last compared to some of the new chinese stuff so 
I'm fairly confident that this will be up and running at a bargain price of about $300 all in. Right, on to the question answer section. Well, question section, really, I don't have any answers. Right, questions. Does this compressor need special oil or is it just basic Covener Garden engine oil? What does that big thing do? And what's that gauge for? It does say pressure. But is that just a sort of um, on the fly type pressure so you can see that the the compressor is compressing? I don't know. Let me know what that is and if that does anything. It just seems a bit strange sticking away out there. What's this line here? I, mean, it's, I think it's oil because there's oil there. Is there supposed to be something going in there? Not sure. Let me know what that is if you know. Is this an automatic switch? It switches in and out, but will that stick further out if it trips something? No idea. I suppose I could read the label, but it's upside down and I'm not Australian. Why are these power wires crossed over there to there and there to there? Does that matter? Doesn't make sense to me. Let me know. On to the tank. I'd rather not bolt this straight into the concrete floor. It's going to vibrate, like, not vibrate, but it's going to feel the vibration through the entire house. Is it okay to mount this on like blocks of wood and maybe attach the whole thing with a chain to the wall or something like that? Obviously you don't want this falling over, but direct maybe installing that direct to the concrete floor is going to shake the entire house. So let me know what you would do. And of course, the most important question, what colour should I paint it? I mean, I could just go shiny black like every other compressor on the planet. Not keen on that goldy colour or copper, whatever it is. I'm not really, as much as I appreciate vintage stuff, I don't really like the look of vintage stuff. So I might go black, but if you get any any ideas, any anything fancy, I'm not going to do some fancy paint job on it. I'm not going to do a whole Scott Rods theme. Uh, yeah, I think I've answered my question right. It's probably going to be black. There's one more thing. What is it? Oh yeah, I remembered. Do I need to install one of these on the end of this? Because if I just open this tap, then it's going to get the full pressure of that. So do I need to invest in another one of these? Just a regulator, that's what it is, right? So I can regulate the pressure coming out. Well, that's all I can think of at the moment. If you have any suggestions or concerns, please leave a comment and try and answer the questions. You don't need to answer them all. There's no prizes. Just answer what you can, please. I'm, I'm new to this compression thing, so I appreciate all your help. I also appreciate Josh for setting me up with this. I think it's a good price. And if it works as described, it's a great price. Looking forward to firing it up, which I might do with the motor just to make, it, make sure it chuff chuffs. But I need to get a plug and wire and all that for that. And I don't really want to get stuck into the compressor restoration until I do something on one of my projects. I was so close this morning. But I couldn't let this bargain pass me by. I think you'll agree. If it works. Right, stay safe everyone. See you tomorrow. Or the next day. Mm.